Yo folks, so welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about the latest gacha games, mobile titles, and games coming to July, gacha news, weekly, and more. Let's jump right into this. First thing is being is Captor Clash right here. This is going to be a beat em up 2D action RPG style, and I don't think it's gonna have gacha mechanics to it. Overall, it looks like to be a pretty cool title with its own style of graphics. And hopefully it doesn't have gacha stuff because usually it's hard to translate gacha games in these more 2D action RPG stylistic games because they're so specific and it's hard to just create gacha characters or heroes right off the bat when it comes to these more detail oriented games. Then we also have Quantum Maki that's going to be out in closed betas and its pre-registrations is now up. This is inspiration from near Automata, bullet hells of all sorts. I just want to put it on your radar. It's only going to be out in JP, but hey, if you can get into CBTs, that's really cool. Then we also have Star Wars Hunters getting its delays to 2023 for Switch, iOS, and Android devices. If you've never heard of this game, this is going to be on the Star Wars series. And what's really cool about this is it's probably going to have like Disney's Mirrorverse. So if you like that sort of content, maybe it's like that. Or it's going to be more of your typical RPG, maybe like those Disney games that are more idol oriented. I could sort of see it going down that path. Overall, it just seems to be a high quality Star Wars game that people might want to see because a lot of the ones might not be as polished. So if you're a Star Wars fan, pretty cool. Then we have the Eroica. This is gonna be some cutscenes into it. I think this is gonna be a phenomenal RPG. If you're wondering how does the gameplay flow with this one, outside of, you know, the dragons and whatnot that's going to be in this game, it's out in Southeast Asia. But just know it is going to be pre registered for global. And the Southeast Asia version is gonna be all in English, it's gonna be a turn based RPG. So if you want something that you're more notably familiar with, I'm gonna be recommending this game to try it out. I don't think it's going to be something that you play long term. It's something to hold you over as we get bigger titles to release in the near future. Then we also have Dongen Ropa Ultimate Summer. Just note with this, it's going to be out on Steam, your PCs and mobile devices. There's going to be waifus and husbandos. All you need to know is that this game draws a lot of influence from Ace Attorney. There's going to be RPG mechanics to it. And this seems to be like a board game version of itself. So you're going to be having some interesting mechanics flowing and growing. But the most important thing is Danganronpa is a heavily story driven game. So if you like stories, you want something a little bit different, you can try out this one and it's going to be on sale. Then we also have Echo Calypse that's going to be out for pre-registration. If you did not see my reviews on this one, I think this is going to be a phenomenal waifu collector. It's probably going to hold us over until bigger releases as well. I don't think it's something that you're going to dig a lot of content out of because a lot of the gameplay was just auto and you had like artifacts that had certain skills. Why you play this is because the waifus look amazing and really vibe with that context. Outside of that, it seems to have like that Illusion Connect vibe where you don't know where it's going and there's just a lot of mechanics that just seem like hobbled together. It's okay. That's all I want to say. I don't want to like poop on it too much. It's just okay, right? I'm just here for all the different things you can collect, such as the amazing waifus can be had in this game as I want to preface. Then we also have Netflix Into the Breach that is now out globally, I believe, or at least in EN. If you wanted a non gotcha style tactical RPG, I recommend it. It's fast paced. The combat is slick and everything about it just screams quality as well. So if you wanted something that's different, but still has like that big heady feel of getting crazy gameplay out of such a small form factor, I highly recommend Into the Breach. Then we also have Project Winter Mobile. Now with this one, it is reminiscent of something like Among Us. If you're wondering how is that the case, you're gonna be voting on certain things and there's also gonna be people who can murder each other. And I guess there's gonna be certain tasks that you can do. It's gonna be available on mobile. The only thing I wanna do a close up on was look at this. They're being dragged along their bloody snow. Project Winter, not Project Snow, that's gonna be out late August. Then we also have Grimlight News that's going to be releasing in two weeks or more, but it's going to be coming out. That's all you need to know. Lots of giveaways coming with this one. Grimlight finally seeing the light of day because of all the hectic stuff that previously involved into it. It's good stuff. 
Next up, we have Burst Witch that is now out on Steam. It's only $7. Now, what's the difference between the Steam version and the mobile version? Mobile version is free, but it also has gotcha mechanics. Steam version is seven bucks. You get all the waifus that you want. A built-in package where you don't have to worry about that stuff. So in case you wanted to play a bullet hell shmup game, it's gonna be the one for you for seven bucks as a cheaper alternative compared to the gotcha, I would say. Then we also have the news with Tower of Fantasy. This is going to be out on Steam as well. I'm not sure if you saw it. It's gonna be Q4 of 2022, and it is still going to be out Q3 2022. When is Q3? Q3 is right now. It could be a month from now. It could be two months from now. This game is going to be releasing relatively soon. So look out for it. It's probably gonna be the biggest title of 2022, Genshin competitor and all. It doesn't really matter to me. I just want a good game at the end of the day when it comes to our mobile fronts and gotcha games. We also have Alice Fiction, a date announced for this one. It's going to be July 27th. And this is gonna be my hype game of next week outside of Octopath Traveler, which we'll talk about a little bit later. One reason why is because this is a match style reminiscent of something like Candy Crush or Puzzles and Dragons with more of a 2D format, so a single line. And the waifus, the art style looks really cool on this. And it's always nice to see something a little bit different because we get a lot of turn-based RPGs that just draw the same sort of energy. Alice Fiction, it feels a little bit more different. It's vibrant, it's colorful. Just something to spice up the way we've had gotcha games in the past and anything a little bit different, I am keen to play. Not to mention with Alice Fiction, there's going to be a collab or promotional content with Gargura and Takanashi Kiara. So if you wanted to see Hololive doing some promotional stuff with Alice Fiction, not to mention Cytus 2, I believe a rhythm game is also going to be having collaboration. Alice Fiction just blowing out all the stops in order to make this one of the more successful launches of gotcha games in 2022. Next up, we have ETE Chronicle entering closed beta on July 30th. Now, this has to be the game that I am most excited for, even though it's gonna be only out, I believe, in JP. Look at the graphics and the art style for this. Reminds me something of Contai Collection or you know, the old school, actual C-based games. And what's really nice is, obviously, it's gonna have mechs, but the waifu designs, they have some jiggles, the cultures in it. So if you wanted something a little bit different and you want some graphical fidelity as you're playing the game, I think this one is definitely something to look out for. I know it sucks that it's only gonna be out in JP, but this is definitely my favorite of the week. Next up, we have ReZero Infinity that's getting JP servers and CBTs on July 28th. If you wanna look at some screenshots of the gameplay, it reminds me of Tensura Slime Reincarnation, so a 3D format. There's a lot of ReZero games in the JP lands, but I believe this is the first one with 3D graphics that actually play proper homage to it. So we'll see if this actually comes out in EN. Hopefully it does well. I'm just wanting another ReZero anime, to be honest with you guys. And we also have Aether Gazer releasing its pre-registration website. Now, Aether Gazer, reminiscent of something like PGR, just know it says 21 days on this website. That doesn't mean it's going to be releasing in 21 days. I think it's just gonna be pre-registration rewards are going to be announced. Yostar is known for just doing heavy PR and marketing for the, all the games that they release. So it'd be really weird for this to release in 21 days without very much like talk of the town on Aether Gazer. Next up, we have Inazuma 11. That's going to be renamed to Inazuma 11 Victory Road. This is going to be a soccer style game. So if you wanted something like that, look forward to this one. Releasing, I'm not sure. It got its name changed, so maybe it's going to be delayed even further. I just like to talk about games that are releasing, right? Then we have Eternal Kingdom Battle Peak. Now, the only thing that has me interested with this one is the graphics look pretty decent. It's going to be out on global. That's the biggest thing. It's going to be out on Steam, your mobile devices and PS4s. I don't think it's going to be on Xbox, but it releasing on so many different platforms. Really just cool to know. It has that Final Fantasy vibe to it. And the screenshots for the gameplay don't look absolutely terrible. But at the same time, I'm not too excited for it as well. Just knowing that it's going to be coming out on multiple platforms just has me sort of interested where this is going to be going. And finally, we have Octopath Traveler news, July 27th, mark the date. This might be the other big release of this month outside of Alice Fiction. I don't want us to forget about this one because the pixel graphic market for gacha games has 
definitely come to a peak. We've had Arctic Gear Fusion, which has some graphical inspirations of Octopath Traveler. And then we also have Revive Witch, which heavily looks like Octopath Traveler. And this is gonna be brought to you by Square Enix. Square Enix does a decent job of advertising their games. I think there's a booth at San Diego Comic-Con in case you wanna check it out. Octopath Traveler, it's gonna be releasing by the end of this month. Then we have the events rolling around. First up, we have Epic Seven Summer Things. But in this data mine, while we're looking at some of the summer characters that's going to be appearing in skins, there's also voice packs for Edward, Elric, Roy, and Lisa from Full Metal Alchemist. I don't think this entails a Full Metal Alchemist collaboration with Epic Seven, at least until I see art. But hey, it's interesting to see if this is going to be a thing with FMA and Epic 7 because we all know Epic 7 has some of the best 2D art in the gotcha space. Then we have Full Metal Alchemist actually doing its pre-release live streams on July 29th. It's probably going to be announcing the dates for FMA Alchemist Mobile actually releasing because this is going to be one of the better quality games of 2022, at least in JP. The graphics, the tactical RPG, everything about this game screams quality and I'm just looking forward to Full Metal Alchemist celebrating its 10th anniversary appropriately with some high fidelity stuff rolling around. And we have Dragalia Lost doing its finish out campaign. It's gonna be giving some end game stuff in case you're a Dragalia Lost player or you're just curious what's happening in Dragalia Lost. They're just going out hard before they burn out for end of service. Then we have Toho Don Maku Kagura shutting down October 28th. Just note, this is going to be the rhythm-based version. It's not going to be the turn-based RPG that some folks are familiar with. And there's some interesting news that's rolling around with all these shutdowns. So apparently there is a big shutdown due to the Unity engine or game engines being updated on the mobile fronts. This leads to a lot of games requiring development costs in order to upgrade them to the newest features in order for the game to be continued to be playable on the Google Plays or iOS devices. It's not worth it to the cost. So publishers are just like, no, we're axing them. We're just gonna be shutting down a bunch of games. And what's really interesting with the shutdown of games is that there also seems to be a glowing trend where a lot of stuff is just releasing on PC. For example, Eternal Kingdom Battle Peak and some of the other titles that's just going to be announced like Tower of Fantasy, that one's going to be on your PC devices as well. So maybe all of these Android games coming out on PC is another reason why game engine updates are just causing a lot of shutdowns and people just don't want to pay for the devs to do their things, right? And we have Diablo Immortal doing a CN release finally. Just wanted to squash the bug that it's not going to be releasing in China. It's probably gonna be doing numbers. Just know China's gonna be watching Diablo Immortal heavily because this game is monetized heavily. But to be honest, it's not that much different from any other mobile game. It's just a matter of like Diablo fans, I guess, spending more money than the average mobile gamer. We also have Azure Lane uncensoring Prince Rupert. This is a small uncensor in my opinion, but an uncensor nonetheless. They're just slowing the clothing on her cleavage area. So now you can see more booba. I have no idea why that is a thing, but hey, I'm all about it. Azure Lane being as cultured as ever. You'll love to see it. Then we got Exos Heroes coming to PC in August. So if you wanted to play Exos Heroes on your PC devices, that's gonna be nice. Exos Heroes, a classic in some people's eyes. It's definitely a beautiful 3D game, I have to say. Monetization could definitely use some work. And then we have Warframe news with it coming to our mobile devices. And thanks to Tenocon 2022, just note there's just gonna be some testing that's gonna be occurring in the future. No actual gameplay. It's already playable on the Switch, so Warframe coming to mobile fronts doesn't really surprise me too much. Next up, we have Zenless Zone Zero tuning test or the closed beta test. It's going to be occurring, so for anyone who got into the alpha test, congrats. Usually Hoyoverse is pretty heavy on screening people when playing their alpha test, so congrats to everyone who got in and don't mess it up because it's probably a huge opportunity to be one of the first to cover Zenless Zone Zero and give them proper feedback on how this game flows. Next up, we have Genshin news with the mesmerizing Dream at Sea web event. It's gonna be pretty interesting. You're gonna be collecting memories for Paimon and getting some free Primo gems. And then we also celebrate Tartalia's birthday, which led to some sus art because of his belt being in a weird 
location. Overall, I really love this as Bondo, so really cool to celebrate his birthday. And we have the IRL news rolling around. First up, we have Eno Games GmbH. This is going to be a German studio. It's going to be providing some transparency on the mobile gaming space or just the gaming space in general, which is really cool. They also want to hire female developers, which is just nice to see because the game industry news has just been pretty bad lately. So something positive is just nice to see. We also have Princess Connect celebrating its 1.5 year anniversary. There's free 10 draws currently rolling around. So if you log in, get some free stuff in case you want to do so. Now it's probably the best time to play Princess Connect and I'm still playing Princess Connect. It's the game I play the most on my mobile device outside of Ardor Gear Fusion, which I am lagging behind and I pretty much dropped Countersign just because I've been a little bit busy. And with the Nikkei news, they're out in San Diego Comic-Con. I'm going to be attending Saturday by the time this video releases is probably past Saturday. All that you need to know, Nikkei is out there. Pre-registrations are now live. The game that I'm still hoping to blow me out of the water in 2022, but overall, I'm super excited for this one. But anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram if you wanna see my face. Once we hit 35,000 subs, we're doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day. And let me know down in the comments if I miss anything, you know, you wanna correct some mistakes as you guys do. I appreciate it nonetheless. Comments are always nice. And see you in the next one. Take care.